Welcome back, ZeroK fans. To Natalie is at Don. I remain your host, Chad Fury 333 and we're starting off round three of the Swiss tournament. It is going to be on iced coffee, and we are going to be having icons and exploit as our stream participants today. So, as mentioned before, we also have Gaia vs. Fail Thoughts, Lamedeus and Magman, and Dimefriend, and Google Frog will all be going at it. But, right now, Icons and Exploit are our subjects. And Icons wondering if this is, this is a good hovercraft map? No, it is not. I don't think. It likely isn't because these... The water areas are a little bit too low. Hovercraft tend not to work. They were kind of not designed to work. It's... I don't think I really thought about it. Anyhow, no, this... These are a touch too low. Hovercraft will not get into there. Amphibious pots will, definitely. Like, this is a great map for Amphib. But it looks like both players are going to be going for shields, so that's a moot point. Anyway, Iced Coffee is a map that... It gets into some of the more choke point design that you see in Zero K. It's not necessarily a design that works especially well. But it works all right. Well, the one upside to the design is that you do get a strong sense of where you can go on the map, and you do have this sense that you know your opponents can go in a certain way. You can cut them off, or you can flank them in ways that are somewhat predictable. But the choke points are a little small. Well, they're actually really small. At any rate, Exploit going for Dirtbag into a couple bandits, while Icons, on the other hand, goes for pretty much straight bandit. That's their entire setup right now. Right off the bat, get it, well, get a convict into bandit. So Icons wants that economy right off the bat. Exploit, on the other hand, getting a bit more defenses to begin with, and then going for a raid of their own. And that raid could just completely wipe out Icons if done right. There's not a whole lot else here to actually stop anything. Icons doesn't have any static defenses in their queue. And they only have a couple bandits coming in. Once Exploit sees that there's nothing, I mean, they already have their bandits on the way. The dirtbag is pretty much a formality at this point. But hey, it does see that there is a Lotus in the main base. That's... that's a thing. It also is in a position to actually block off the factory, and that's exactly what it does. Or at least to try to do so. It slows things down a little bit, but doesn't manage to actually block anything. That is a very old strategy. I'm a bit... I'm a bit concerned why Exploit felt the need to do that, but hey, it's it's something. It exists. Like, it's a valid strategy. It's just really old. On account of the fact that it's not something you can really do nowadays effectively. It used to be something you do against any... Like, basically, you do it against the light vehicle factory, because they couldn't get out, and they couldn't easily pull around it like the bots are doing right now. Dirtbag was, a couple years ago, changed to block bots, but it's... Not quite as effective because bots have an easier time moving around the hill that is generated. Still, Exploit managed to get rid of Icon's first constructor, so that will slow down Icon's quite a bit. Exploit getting their economy built up at the same time, so... Should be able to deal with this. Exploit, on the other hand, getting another convict up. They have their commander coming in to immediately reclaim everything, and their, their economy should build up considerably faster... When you consider that Exploit doesn't have as much of a spread out economy, doesn't have as many workers. I mean, they killed one of Icon's workers, but that kind of puts them at parity. They lost four bandits in the process, and they lost all that metal reclaim as well. Like, Icon's got another 230 metal that they can reclaim on top of the 40 metal they reclaimed off the metal extractor. That might have not been the best idea, all things considered. Exploit right now in an okay position, but if they had another bandit... Sorry, another convict. That would have made it work. Actually, no, they do. Never mind, they did get another convict. Okay, so they have a slight convict advantage. That is the important thing. The also important thing is that Icons has just opened Exploit up considerably. I mean, Exploit is still going to have a relatively easy time defending right now, but Icons will get an army up and then that won't be the case, because Icons actually has eight bandits coming forward to Exploit's base and could very quickly kill Exploit. Exploit's already prepared with a outlaw, but just the one. Not a pure thug law ball or anything, just outlaw with the convict shield to protect it. 
Not a terrible idea. Just circling, circle guarding that outlaw, or that convict. Still, Ikens is looking pretty strong. Right, their economy is being built up a bit faster than Exploit. Although Exploit has now managed to get the Northeast as well. Actually, no, no, come to think of it, no. This is actually where Exploit's advantage is coming to, really coming to fruition. Though Exploit's commander could go down in a second. As the bandits are tearing it apart, the Exploit will lose their commander. They'll lose all the storage as well, having not built any storage thus far. And their energy economy is below 10. So they can't even produce from their factory. I mean, notwithstanding the fact that they have a caretaker, they can't even produce full speed from their factory without a caretaker on its own. Exploit going for a counterattack, but this is probably death. There is one chance, and that is Exploit reclaiming this. No, getting storage first. First get storage, then get energy, then do the reclaim. If Exploit does things in that order, they have a chance. If they don't, then this match is going to end in the next five minutes. Actually, it's going to end in the next two minutes if they don't. It's not even going to last that long. Ikens has four bandits in the back, not a whole lot of defenses that will get in their way, and they have an economic advantage and production advantage that is not really being helped by the fact that Exploit is lo throwing a bunch of reclaim into the fire. Like, I don't know why Exploit isn't building storage, or building energy, or really building much of anything. Like, granted, their one convict is out here, but I don't know why they weren't immediately going to convicts as soon as they had the chance. Or for the matter why they're building metal extractors when they need energy desperately. That's a bit of an odd set of choices coming from Exploit, and that's going to give Icons the game. I mean, on top of losing their commander, Exploit had a bit of a chance early on. Their economy was being built up. They had the advantage of... They had the convict advantage, and were taking advantage of that. They were building a bit faster than Icons. But, for one thing, this map is actually one where the convict advantage, or the worker advantage, isn't quite as pronounced as most maps, just due to its size. And also, Exploit needs energy and is not going for it. Like, they're throwing the game away. They, this is... This is Icon's game to lose. As Exploit just puts everything in the metal. Finally getting some wind generators, but way in front. Like, not only that, this is actually a terrible position for wind generators. This map is not very good for wind generators outside of your main base. I, I don't understand the rationale for building power plants, especially such fragile power plants, so far out in the open. I mean, Icons can very easily tear these apart, so, I mean, Exploit will have their energy going. They will manage to be able to spend their money. They desperately need storage. But, this is, this is the thing, is like, Exploit just doesn't have, doesn't have basically anything they need to win this game. They don't have the energy, they don't have the storage, they don't seem to be thinking about that stuff either. Not in a way that works, like I said, this is exactly what I was talking about. The energy is being built in the most vulnerable location rather than the convict moving back home. Like, yeah, I get it. You're a convict, that's your frontline convict. But you just lost, effectively, your frontline builder. The best option at this point is to move the convict back, rebuild what you need to do, build storages, build energy, whatever you need to do. Build that stuff. And then go from there. And I don't know why Exploit did not build energy. They, they would have been able to stay in this game if they built energy. I mean, this is kind of a pattern I've seen with Exploit, so I'm not sure what to say is that like they have they have a strategy in mind that they do but they forget about all these details like energy and storage and it's like it's a lot of rookie mistakes but they never seem to get in their head not i don't even want to throw shade on that it's just that is a pattern i notice is that exploit will be able to work until something like a commander death happens and then they just seem to sputter around and not know what to do like, continue to either continue to be aggressive or continue to go for whatever they're trying to do, despite the fact that they can't or forget that, you know, energy is needed for construction alongside the metal. It, it's... It's something I've noticed that they've seemed to have a problem with for years. I don't know why. They play quite a bit. It's just... There seems to be something missing in the way that their analysis is going of the game. Or why they lost. And the storage change actually is months old. Like, Exploit has played quite a bit in the last few months. The storage change on Commander happened, I think, in November or December. 
I'd have to double check the change logs, but it wasn't that recent. Anyway, that's all there is for that particular match. And it looks like Gaiop managed to beat Felthos as well, so we have that as another event going on in this tournament. It looks like right now we are just going to be waiting on the other two matches. I believe those are being casted by Crow and Mike Pester. It's kind of a weird multi-cast thing going on here. It's going to get a little crazy once we get into the single elimination portion. Anyway, that is likely to be up for now. It looks like Dimefern and Google Frog have also ended their match, so I don't know what's happened there. But we'll be back with that in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.